Okay, so we got a new guitar today for the channel, and this one is from a brand that isn't afraid to mix a couple guitars that we all love together. What happens when you cross a Fender Telecaster, a Gibson Les Paul, and a Gretsch? Well, you get this guitar. So let's do a geek dive. This is a bell tone guitar, and this is their newest model. First, can we just say before we open up, can we just say how cool this case is? It's a blue alligator. Okay, oh wow, look at that. So this is the Bell Tone B Classic 3 in Skyburst. The body finish is a soft gloss light nitro. It's a alder body. The neck finish is soft satin light nitro. Maple neck, neck profile is full modern C shape. Radius is 12 inch radius. Fingerboard is maple. 22 frets. These are nickel frets. And it's a 25 and a half inch scale length. The uh, nut is a bone. Tuners are bell tone locking tuners. So the neck is a one piece maple neck, but it does have a maple fretboard on it. And this neck is a quarter sawn piece of maple. Uh, so it's not flat sawn. A lot of time you guys ask questions about that. You know, how do you tell it's a, a quarter sawn piece of maple or does it even matter if it is? So the fastest way to tell if a piece of wood on a neck is quarter sawn is to look at the top of the neck and see if the grain lines are going vertical. In other words, from top of the headstock to the back of the headstock, going this way. Another way is if you flip it over, sometimes you can look at the back of the neck and the neck will seem pixelated. If they are going horizontal, in other words, with the uh, headstock, uh, that means it's flat sawn. Does it matter? For a fun illustration, I'm gonna use two pieces of cardboard to show how the direction of the grain can change the stability of a guitar neck without even adding anything like a truss rod or carbon fiber rods. In this case, you can see how bending the cardboard in the direction of the channels, i.e. the example of the grain, makes it really easy. But however, the opposite way, going this way, doing this way, trying to bend it this way, you see, it's much harder, so you have much force to bend it. So in other words, it's a lot easier for things to go wrong with the grain going the wrong way. I guess that's the best way to put it. So it gives you more stability. Why that matters is when you go from humid climate to dry climate and vice versa. Now, another thing to mention is sometimes they get around this by doing multi-laminate necks. That gives it a lot of stability. The problem though, for guitars like this, that wanna have that vintage aesthetic the multi-laminate necks really just don't have the vibe if you're trying to carry that look. But the best way I ever heard it explained to me was as simple as this. If you bought an expensive guitar and your neck twisted, would it make you feel better knowing they saved a little money doing a flats on neck? And as always, if you're enjoying this video or learning something, you can support this channel by liking or subscribing. And I just wanna say thank you for considering it. The bridge pickup is a Righteous Sound Decotron, and the neck pickup is a Righteous Sound Decotron. If you're not familiar with Righteous Sound pickups, they make all kinds of pickups from vintage PAF pickups to Stratocaster pickups. I'll put a link to their pickups so you can check them out. This is also a good time to mention that Belltone has a huge selection of pickups from TV Jones to Lindy Freeland to Righteous Sound to Porter to their own brand and a bunch of others, and you can just pick whatever you want for the guitar you want. A really nice certificate. Oh, look at that, that's classy. Look at that, that's classy. A couple interesting things to note is the switch tip on the three-way switch is aluminum, and then their, their top hat knobs have the B for the bell tone, which is cool. Okay, no push pulls. Uh, the pick guard, so you're very clear, is this is not a decal or painted. This is 3D cut. In other words, you can feel this. This is a black pick guard. It's a laminated uh, black, white, black pick guard. This has all been engraved, and it looks fantastic, and it feels great. This is the Belltone Tremolo. Let's go ahead and put the tremolo arm in, which is a push-in style tremolo arm. And if you look at the back of the tremolo, you can see that they're using a brass block and very clean in there. The back plate looks like it's aluminum as well. How heavy is this guitar? Let's find out. This guitar is 8.22 pounds. So again, uh, I wouldn't consider that heavy, but it's not on the light side. Let's go into some of the measurement specs because I know you guys are gonna be curious about that. Looking at the nut width first. So the nut width, we are at 43.28 millimeters, so just shy of 44 millimeters, which is 1.704. Looking at the width of the 12th fret, we are at 2.081 or 52.86 millimeters. Looking at the depth of the first fret, we have 21.54 millimeters or 0 0.848. And then on the 12th fret, the thickness of the neck is 0 0.910 or 23.12 millimeters. Definitely not a thick neck. Let's go ahead and look at neck carves. Look at that. That is definitely the C carve. 
And that makes sense because I kind of get the impression from talking to Steven, the owner, that he likes the Gibson uh, 59 era Les Paul vibe carved neck. There's a sweet spot in that neck where when it's a little thinner like this, it feels great. This is something else I'd mention. The fretboard is, I would not call it rolled at all. It's not harsh or sharp to the edge, but it is not a rolled edge fretboard, which is a strange thing because, um, you know, you kind of picture it's more of a vintage vibe instrument. It would have more of a rolled fretboard. Keep in mind, you know, as you roll a fretboard edge and as you over polish these fret ends, a lot of players really don't like when doing bends because when they're bending a high E, they can fall off the side, you know, or just pushing it just goes like that. This is, this does not have any problems with that. There's a lot of meat, as you could say, on the neck. And so maybe that's why they didn't go highly rolled, but it's great. It's like I said, it's not harsh to the touch. That's usually all I care about is when I pick up a neck, sometimes the corner of the neck feels like it's a little harsh and this doesn't have that. Let's go ahead and check the frets, see how they are. So the fret width is 2.57 millimeters or 0 0.101. And the fret height is 0 0.049 or 1.24 millimeters. So these are definitely jumbo style frets. Uh, rounded very nicely and very highly detailed and polished. Let's go ahead and check the setup. So looking at the 12 fret, we are sitting in at two millimeters off the uh, low E and on the high E, we are looking at, I'd, I'd call that one and a half to 1.75. Pretty consistent across the fretboard as well. I'd say an average of two millimeters off the fretboard, which as we know now is standard on the industry. Uh, whether the industry says so or not, that's what the guitars are shipping at. <laughs> it seems like no matter where you get them from. So let's go ahead and see how straight the neck is. And to do that, we can just push down the first fret, the last fret, and just see how much play on the string is. There's a little bit of play there. So there's a little bit of relief. And uh, let's go ahead and play all the notes and see if we have any dead spots. Uh, on the last episode, somebody put a comment, what is a dead spot? A dead spot is what happens when one of the frets is slightly taller than the others and the note that you're playing, it just buzzes and it doesn't completely make a note or it makes the note and there's a lot of buzz or sizzle, depends on how you kind of perceive that sound at the end of the note. So let's go ahead and see if there's any high frets. Okay, so no dead spots, and this is a good time. We we didn't we tend to do the handshake test where we hold a guitar where the neck bolts on or is jointed to the body, whether it's glued or, or bolted, to see how comfortable this area is and see how easy the access is. It's pretty thick right there, although the contour is right there, which is nice. I'd say it's no more or no less awkward than modern style Fender guitars that have that same kind of neck joint. And again, this isn't really gonna be, I don't think a shredder's guitar, but it's possible and it can be done. It feels pretty comfortable. There's not a lot of stuff uh, hitting your way because they did remove so much material right there. Let's go ahead and check the fret ends. And um, this one's a tough one because I believe it came from Florida <laughs> and it came to Arizona. And I know we talk about import guitars uh, having a lot of fret sprout because they come across the ocean. Believe it or not, just coming from like Chicago to where I am in Arizona or uh, California to here or Florida is problematic. So let's go ahead and do the, the treble side. Well, that's pretty good. You know, look, look at that. I, I would say that's a four and a half or a, uh, maybe a five out of five. Here's what's tricky. Looking at it, there's no marks. That's a five out of five. I want to give them five out of five, but you can kind of feel where it sprouted a little bit, but I think they did such a good polish job. So in other words, what I'm trying to tell you is these frets have sprouted a little bit, meaning the neck has shrank a little bit. I can feel it uh, with my fingers and I can feel it with the sock, but they did such a good job polishing the frets that it's not affecting that. So that's a good point to sometimes bring out is that it doesn't really matter if your frets sprout. Sometimes if those ends of the frets aren't sharp, if they've been rounded really nicely and really detailed polished, when they poke out a little bit more, <laughs> they don't seem to matter. Let's do that bass side. And look at that, that's a five out of five. Something else we like to do is see if there's anything uh, kind, of, kind of scratching the sock on the bridge. And this is a good time to mention, like sometimes these, you know, these screws are sticking out and you can see they're all flush, very nice. Let's see what these pickups are doing. Let's look at the electronics. Let's first meter out the pickups. Now, these are gonna be filter strong style pickups. So one thing that's probably going to be consistent is the uh, resistance is gonna be very low. Um, filter Tron style pickups, vintage ones especially, are known for having um, basically not a lot of wire. So the 
uh, what we consider the output of the pickup. And again, that's very uh, vague when we use that terminology, but the output of the pickup is very low. However, the magnets are usually strong and the, the uh, bobbins are very tall. And, um, and so even though the wraps, there's not a lot of wraps because they're wrapped very tall instead of kind of wide out. Filtertron style pickups are considered some of the most aggressive pickups. Like you really get an amp to bite. For reference, we know that a vintage single coil fender pickup would sit in the five to six K range. And this bridge pickup is sitting in at 4.32. So that's pretty low. So like I said, this would make you think that it's a very weak sounding single coil pickup, but it's not. It's a humbucker and it's actually going to sound probably my guess really big but a lot more mids to me the filtertrons have those mids that a lot of a lot of guitars are missing here it is this is uh the neck is at 3.32 now this is the other thing that's important about why filtertrons are very desirable to a lot of guitar players especially good quality ones like these like these right sound ones fender amps especially the princeton and the uh, deluxe reverb to name a few they're really mid scooped they usually have a um a bass control a treble control and then a fixed mid-range control. So pickups like this that have a lot of the beefier mids in them, man, they just hit an amp like that and it's like, it's symbiotic. It's like how it's what it was meant to be. So it's pretty cool. Let's look at that inductance. Now, a lot of people ask me how I'm doing that on the meter, this meter. So here I'm setting it to 20 Henry's. That's how I'm looking at this. And this looking at the bridge, 1.61 and the neck, 1.01, which is actually a little less than I thought I would see. Okay, let's look at the back. A couple things about the back to understand. The electronics cavity is flush and the tremolo plate is not flush with the guitar. That's kind of a standard thing, right? Some of you guys really don't like that. I personally don't care. Uh, let's go ahead and take this back plate off. Okay. Oh, look at that. That looks really nice. Okay, so a couple things. There is conductive shielding paint painted inside the cavity. Uh, the back of the plate, however, doesn't have any shielding. And then we have a three-way mechanical switch, which looks really good. So we have two 500K CTS pots with a treble bleed right there. And then we have a bumblebee capacitor right here. And this one appears to be a paper and oil 0.022 microfarad capacitor. Everything really nice and clean. And then of course, all that goes to the output jack which is a Switchcraft output jack, and it looks really good. And again, I love the details right there. Look how good that detail looks, really nice. As of filming this video, I see Belltone guitars in the $2,600 range and up, and that's about where you would expect to see prices for a USA semi-custom or custom shop line. I'm gonna run it through a Fender 65 Deluxe Reverb, and I'm gonna run the neck pickup first. Let's give it a run through, here we go. That pickup just sounds so soft and, and kind of creamy. It also does this really cool clarity kind of. put it in the middle position, even get more. You go to the bridge, instead of getting that bright twang, you get this kind of full mid-range. 
which sounds great for just sustain. Overdrive, I'm going to use a Love Pedal OD11. It's basically a Zen Drive clone. I'm just going to push a little overdrive in front of the amp. I also decided to add just a little bit of delay. Um, I'm going to start with the neck pickup. Here we go. Go to the bridge. turn the delay off. Now typically a middle position isn't really an overdrive sound thing, but in this case this guitar just sounds These guitars are for someone who's either A found that the Fender Gibson Road hasn't led them to where they want to be and they're looking for something a little bit more interesting or maybe unique, or they just want to support smaller builders and also support made in USA guitars, or like I said, want something that feel they feel like when they're in a crowd of guitar players, they have something that just feels a little bit more attached to them and less attached to the big histories of the bigger companies. And the quality of this instrument is on par with anything in the market in its price range, not only in the fit and finish and how well they did this particular model, but the feature set. So what I'll do is I'll put a link to Belltone in the description down below. It's not an affiliate link, but at least you get you to their website. And also, I just want to say thank you for making it to the end of the video. As you know, that's a big deal. And always until the next time, know your gear.